Hello and welcome again. So we are moving on forward towards our next curved bacteria that is the Helicobacter pylori. We have initially talked about this curved bacteria as a Campylobacter jejuni, Vibrio cholidae and Helicobacter pylori and among that we are talking about now about Helicobacter pylori. So differentiating they were the gram negative, oxidase positive, curved bacteria they can differentiate it like um, <coughs> Campylobacter jejuni can grow on 42 degrees Celsius in a special media like a scrum agar or Campylobacter agar then we are talking about the Helicobacter pylori this Vibrio cholerae which was able to grow in alkaline environment that is in alkaline media the TCBS agar and now we are talking about this Helicobacter pylori which is a micro aerophilic requirement of organism and that urea is positive you can say okay Moving forward, we are on page 146. This is step 1, 2021 microbiology section revision. And I'm Dr. Ranjit Sa, an infectious disease expert as well as a clinical resource from the Harvard Medical School. So talking about this uh, Helicobacter pylori, this is the carb flagellated motile. So it is a motile organism. This is the carb gram negative round that is triple positive. So this makes it unique to identify in your vignette, in your scenario or the information given in your questions. That will be a catalase positive, oxidase positive and urease positive. So these are catalase positive as well, urease positive as well and oxidase positive as well. So this three thing that is catalase positive, oxidase positive and urease positive makes it easy to capture from the question and identify from the question or say identify in the lab as well. So can be used urea breath test or fecal antigen test for diagnosis which we can talk uh, we'll I'll show you the example. So ureas produce ammonia creating an alkaline environment which helps S. pylori survive in the acidic mucosa. So the pH of your gastric contain is around 1.5 to 2.5 which is highly acidic. No organism grow in your stomach ex except this Helicobacter pylori. So the organism that is present can survive in your stomach pH is only one and that is Helicobacter pylori. How they can survive? They can survive by producing an enzyme known as the ureas. So they, when they produce the ureas, they break down the urea and they will the con they will be the conversion of this carbon dioxide and ammonia. This ammonia environment will be continuously present around the bacteria. So the gastric pH when it comes in near the bacteria, it get neutralized and the bacteria never get exposed to the acid and they survive. They actually doesn't found the surface. They are in the sub epithelial level, so there will be a micro aerophilic environment. And due to the products continuous production of this ammonia, they can easily survive in the this gastric acidic content in our stomach so they can resist this uh, acidic mucosa acidic environment in the stomach by producing this ammonia making an alkaline environment around it colonize mainly the entrum of the stomach so they are mainly common present at the entrum of the stomach cause gastritis and peptic ulcer disease especially duodenal so they are found in your entrum of the stomach they will lead to the gastric ulcer or duodenal ulcer called as the peptic ulcer disease the risk factor for peptic ulcer disease, disease gastric adenocarcinoma and multilymphoma. Mal so if you're not going to treat it, this is the one of the potent carcinogenic agent. If you're not going to treat it, then they will lead to a carcin due to cancer. So you need to identify first and then you need to treat it. So what are the risk factors that it will develop? It will develop the peptic ulcer disease, which is very common in all around the world. Then if you are not treating it, it will may lead to the gastric adenoma or say malt lymphoma. So this will be the condition if you are not going to treat this gastric peptic ulcer disease or gastri gastritis. The most common initial, initial treatment is triple therapy. We go for the three, three uh, type of drugs that is the um, two antibiotics that is amoxicillin, metronidazole, if penicillin energy plus clethromycin plus proton inhibitor that may be a pantoprazole, lansoprazole, omeprazole, anything. So the triple therapy includes two antibiotics as well as one that is proton pump inhibitor. Or even we can switch to a quadruple therapy where bismuth based quadruple therapy if concerned about the microbial lead resistance. If not improved with the triple therapy, we can may switch to the quadruple therapy where bismuth based quadruple therapy is added. To remember this uh, formula, there is antibiotics cure pylori, so antibiotic amoxicillin, C4 clarithromycin and P4 proton pump inhibitor. You always have to remember triple, triple therapy is uh, given for 14 days period of time and for the treatment of this as pylori infection. Now let me show you the, this, some of your picture. 
So this is the Helicobacter pylori, is a gram-negative bacteria. You have already, they are found in your, they jumps into your body and live in your digestive tract. After many years, they can cause sores called ulcer in the lining of your stomach and upper part of your small intestine. Some of the people, infection can lead to stomach cancer. And you can see over there is, this is the uh, part where they are usually leading to this gastric, gastric ulcer. As you here, we can say peptic ulcer. Uh, let me see over here. So you can see over here, this is the gastric ulcer. So there is the gastric ulcer has been developed and there is a duodenal ulcer as well. So in the duodenum, you can see the duodenal ulcer. In the gastric part, in the stomach, you can see the gastric ulcer. And this is due to the, due to this, both is due to the S. pylori only. Coming to the point of this is the environment where S. pylori infection has been developed. And you can see there again, there will be the lot, multiple things that really, that's are actually responsible for this the development of your gastric ulcer disease. Among that, you have to understand that not adherence to the treatment like inherent. This also host system and microbials. The three things are very much important for developing this disease. If you talk about this organism, these are the flagella. They have produced the UVS. They have lipopolysaccharides. This is a gram-negative other protein that adhere to the host cell. They have type 4 secretion system that is pili like transfer injection of Victor. They even produce exotoxin that is a vacuolating toxin, we can say, that causes gastric mucosa injury. And they have the secretory enzyme like mucinase, protease, lipase. This gastric causes the gastric mucosa injury. So they are continuously damaging your gastric thing that you have to understand they have a certain outcome as well like 80 percent they will be asymptomatic in certain percent they will lead to the gastric adenoma and maybe multi-lymphoma so talking about the culture media the media the bacteria can be grow on the columbia blood agar paste supplement with the whole blood from any of one of the variety or of large mammals such as horse ox or sheep so you have to understand this can be grown on the columbia blood agar in micro aerophilic environment this is the columbia blood agar where it's, you can see blood agar where the organism can be grown but they require the micro aerophilic environment that you have to need and they require this columbia blood agar with supplement base of the whole blood from the any mammals like horse or ox or sheep so we have known where we can culture this is the uh, you can see how this patient okay, this was this is the an antibiotic dix where we can see this this uh, organism sensitivity test has been done and they has been resistant to certain drug like erythromycin and rifampicin but sensitive to amoxicillin which we can give then there with their sensitive to tetracycline and erythromycin group so they, they can be given one proton pump inhibitor in this way we can actually uh, treat the patient according about, about about the diagnosis we can do this rapid urease test this is the this is a tube based when which they, they are the rapid urea producer so they have the urea enzyme you produce you put the urea in the medium and you, when you include the organism they produce the urea and they rapidly change the color by producing urea they convert the urea into the ammonia that ph increases so since alkaline environment come then the color changes where because of the indicator present over there and this indicate as a rapid urea test positive Coming to the point, there are the certain um, commercially available in the America about the CLO test, which is a rapid urease test. This can, we can see they can put the organism over here. There is the uh, this can be this is the negative control. Here is the positive control. They have the this urea contained over here. You put the uh, bacteria. The, they produce the enzyme. They will rapidly hydrolyze uh, convert it. They rapidly hydrolyze urea. Ammonia is released. Ammonia changes the pH of the media. The pH goes up. So alkaline environment now the indicator changes and there will be the color production as this is the rapid urea test how we can do let me show over here this is urea breath test rapid urea test so this is the picture where we can see the organism is over in your stomach in your gastric mucosa you will biopsy it after biasing they have the urea enzyme this urea enzyme they, they can produce this rapid urea test why because this this contain the sodium phosphate buffer urea is there in the sodium phosphate buffer with ph 6.5 into phenol red and sodium azide as a uh, indicator when this organism urea is there they will they will when the organism urea will come here they will hydrolyze this urea once the urea will be hydrolyzed the ph will be again increased once the ph will increase there will the indicators phenol red and sodium azide will be changed and they will call give you this red color so in this way rapidly in the bedside you can diagnose your patient by doing endoscopy and taking the 
biopsy. This is the one of the way of diagnosis the S. pylori in the clinical bedside. So it is a very easy rapid urease test. You take the biopsy. There is the organism. The organism produce this enzyme. Enzyme will break down this urea, convert it into the ammonia. So there will be the alkaline environment. Alkaline environment. The pH will increase. Once the pH is increased, the indicator will change its color and come gives this the positive red color. There is another way by which we can diagnose, which is a non-invasive way, and that is called the urea breath test. You give the urea in the form of the capsule. The patient eat the that goes into the stomach. That urea gets break down. But what what important point is there? This carbon has been labeled carbon level urea we have provided. So this, since the body has intake this carbon level urea, they they can enter into the blood, and once enter into the blood, they go carbon dioxide actually excreted from your body, and they excreted from the lungs after breathing out you collect the uh, this air and here if you detect this leveled carbon then you understood the patient has this bacteria by which they have released this enzyme by which this has, urea has been broken down and since this urea has been broken down this urea has you have found that same carbon level urea you have found in your breath and that you have collected in a bag and then you can analyze this let me let me show you the picture this is the rapid ureus breath test where you have uh, you have it, you have ingested this carbon labeled urea this there is an enzyme called ureas that break down into the carbon dioxide and ammonia this carbon dioxide is absorbed in the blood then after blood they have to excrete it from their body so this carbon level is there they can excrete it from the body this carbon level co2 in the breath you analyze in the bag first collect in a bag and analyze it and since if the carbon leveled is present it indicates indirectly that there was this bacteria which has released this enzyme so because of that that has been broken down into the carbon dioxide and ammonia and this carbon dioxide were absorbed in the blood then again excreted out in the respiratory tract through respiratory tract in your respiration if there was no bacteria what will happen this carbon level will not break down this will excrete it from your uh, in a stool in a defecation so there will be no that will be a negative test but if it is positive means there is a bacteria and because of that there is an enzyme and because of that this ammonia and carbon dioxide is broken down and because of that that carbon dioxide is absorbed in the blood comes into the excreted into the respiratory tract and which we have collected in the bag and then analyzed this is the non-invasive rapid urea breath test there is also we have talked about this rapid urea test when which we do the biopsy and then Put, biopsy has been put in and then we observe the color change in color this is also takes place within few minutes so in this way we can diagnose our case of h pylori and then we give a treatment for 14 days this is the commercially available uh, kits in the usa united states of america they can we can do in the uh, <clears throat> this uh, these kits are available is in nepal as well in other developing country also as well but if you have no resource you have a resource uh, limited if you are uh, you have no resources you can do in the lab by doing this uh, tube method as well so we have come to uh, we can go actually into the our Kaplan book so we have talked about this uh, step 1 2021 microbiology uh, now we come to the Kaplan book where we have we can discuss go to the our uh, points this key vignette will be the patient with gastritis also and stomach cancer they are gram negative helical bacteria that are three positive oxidase positive ureas positive catalase positive and they are microaerophilic distinguished feature is the gram negative spiral gastric bacteria with flagella oxidase positive ureas positive microaerophilic human reservoir fecoral transmission pathogenesis they are motile they are ureas positive because ammonia cloud neutralizes stomach acid along survival in the stomach acid during transit to the border mucinous aids in the penetration to the mucosal layer invasion into the stomach lining where ph is neutral inflammation is pro prominent type 2 biotypes 1 and 2 type 1 produce vacuolating cytotoxin which results also are exotoxin the disease they develop is chronic gastritis and duodenal ulcer associated with the several form of the stomach cancer that make is high yield because this is the potent carcinogen gastric adenocarcinoma gastric associated associated lymphoid tissues lymphoma maltoma b cell lymphoma now classified as a who type 1 carcinogen and that makes them very important on the treatment voice of view we can diagnose the biopsy with the culture histological with the gyms or silver listed culture can be done in the columbia blood agar even we can do a rapid ureus breath ureus test rapid breath test see urea salad ammonia is released inhaled and can be diagnosed okay Treatment will be the triple therapy that will be the one proton pump inhibitor plus amoxicillin plus clarithromycin or 14 to 14 days or we can go to the quadruple therapy that is used 
where calithromycin is resistant, we go with the PPI plus bismuth plus 2 antibiotic that is the metrodinazole and tetracycline. So in a not cell, this is the gram negative, carved, oxidase positive, catalyst positive, ureus positive organism and that helps you to diagnose this organism and solve your question. Thank you.